Studnik Aquatics here. I have a project I'm going to work on today. Just got off work. My kids bought me a kayak, the one on the right, and my daughter owns the one on the left, and I'm tired of keeping them in here. So, I am going to build me a rack. This is a little garden. It needs weeded bad. It has potatoes and onions in it. But anyway, I'm going to put them against this shed, and I'm going to set 4x4 four four posts in there, set them in concrete, and then have the platform sticking out that you can set them on and then tie them down. So, that's what I'm going to work on today, and we'll add more to this in just a little bit. Okay, the materials for this cost right at $100. I have four 2x4.8s. Uh, I have two 4x4.8s that are treated. Uh, I did not get the 2x4s treated because I'm going to paint this thing. I have a bag of sack crude over there to put in the bottom of the holes because there's going to be a lot of forward pressure on these posts sticking out so that way they will never move. I also have my tools rounded up. I have a two foot level, a four foot level um, socket set for putting in the lag bolts. I have some Torx head screws, uh, drill bits, eye bolts, lag bolts, uh, pretty much everything I need. And so I have a huge zucchini here that got too big. I'm going to feed it to the chickens. So anyway, I'm going to keep adding more to this. Um, I also brought my miter saw outside so it is ready to go. So first thing I need to do is go um, dig some post holes. I got some post hole diggers there and I'll dig two post holes. I'm putting two foot in the ground. So that's the first step. Okay, I have my holes dug. I do not own a power post hole digger. And so what you want to use is some post hole diggers. And anybody who's worked in a farmer ranch in the Midwest knows what these are. If you don't have a power post hole digger, this is how you dig a hole. Constantly you see people online and on the TV that are showing and they're digging holes and they're using a spade. Well, you have to dig it so huge at the top to get down to the bottom. And this makes a perfectly circular hole. All you do is work it down and get your dirt and bring it back out. And so I know most people probably don't have those, but that's how you do that. I went 18 inches. So now I'm going to set my 4x4 four four post in those holes, level them up, make sure they're in the same depth. And I have some sackcrete, and sackcrete has the, the concrete and the gravel already in it, or the sand. So add water, you have concrete. You can also just buy regular um, concrete mix, or just regular concrete. And with that, you have to add the gravel. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. And so we're going to get this thing mixed up here. And we'll set the post and then pour the concrete down there. Uh, use something to make sure it's in there good, and then fill it with dirt because there's going to be a tremendous amount of forward pressure on this because all the weight is going to be on one side where those kayaks go. So I will add more to this as I go. Pour the concrete mix, the ready mix, in the wheelbarrow. It's best to use the hoe. My handle broke, but it still works. Add a little water and basically just keep working through it. Like so, until it's completely mixed up and is the consistency of concrete mix. I don't want it real runny because I want to be able to hold them post where I need them. So, now that that is done, I'll use a spade Hold the post in here, level everything, and start pouring concrete down around the bottom of both these. So I'm going to get this done before this concrete. You know, it takes a long time for it to set up, but I want to keep moving. Okay, now that I have all the concrete mix in the hole, what I did was I used the handle from that busted hoe and kind of work it down through that concrete and poke holes down in there to get the air out so that it's evenly spaced and there's no air pockets in it. Do the same thing on the other one, and then I used a four-foot level. And I leveled it this way and this way, so everything is perfectly level, going both directions. And they're also the same height. So once this sets for just a little bit, you can go ahead and put dirt on top. It'll still set up as concrete, and these will be solid as a rock, and they will never fall over. So I also take all of your tools that you use with the concrete mix and get them in water right away and rinse them, because if you leave it set very long, you now have concrete on all your tools. So I will add more to this in a little bit. Okay, they're now setting perfectly level both directions, this way and the other way. And basically the idea is, is that I will have a 2x4 that sticks out here that's wide enough for a kayak to sit upside down on. There'll be a little lip on it. And then you'll have to run a board at like a 45 degree angle down here to support it. I have lag bolts to put into these because I don't want to just screw them in because there's going to be a lot of weight on there, especially if you get snow on it. So. I'm going to let these set up. I won't be probably throwing that dirt in there till tomorrow. I want the air to get to it. You can throw dirt on it. It'll still set up, but it'll set up quicker for me if the air it gets to it to evaporate that water out of there so it turns into concrete. So anyway, got a pretty good start. I am going to start measuring out my boards, and I'll probably build them and then, and then bring them over here and put them on. So 
Got more to this later. Okay, these are the four boards that the kayak's going to sit on. There'll be two for each one. I have marked off my three and a half inch mark. You can see the line there. That's the width of a four by four is three and a half inches. So that is where the two by four and the four by four are going to meet at a 90 degree angle. And you, I wanted to uh, lag those in rather than just use screws because there's going to be a lot of pressure on it. So what I did is I bought three inch screws and they're, they're quarter inch lags and they're three inches long. And by being three inches, they're gonna go an inch and a half through the two by four, and then they'll go into the four by four an inch and a half, which is plenty. So, and you also wanna stagger those. You don't want to have them straight up and down from each other. It doesn't, it, it, it's harder to hold it if you do that. And you wanna, you wanna stagger it, like you have one over here and one off of this corner. That way you're on two different grains and you don't, you don't split down the grain. So, I am going to also cut some little boards for the other end of these because I, I, I want to have a board that sits here going this way so that when you drop the kayak into it, it kind of goes into a into a, a U shape, if you will. So I'm not sure how tall to make those. I probably want to have them tall enough so that the edge of the kayak, which is right over there, that board reaches from the ground to at least above that outside bend so that it has less of a chance of the wind blowing it off. So I'm going to go measure that height. I'll probably make it a couple inches, maybe three inches taller than that, and then I'll get those attached on here. And I'm basically waiting for my concrete to, to get set up. When you pre-drill these things, I have a drill bit picked out. Make sure you pick out a drill bit that is no bigger than the size of the lag, not counting the threads. You make it the same size as the outside of the threads, it doesn't hold anything. So I like to go, this is new lumber, so it's, it's not going to split. And so I'm going to pre-drill them so that the, the it's 11 64ths is what it is. is going to work real well for a quarter inch lag. So I'm going to go ahead and get those drilled. And then I'll get these end pieces on there. And then hopefully that's set up enough over there so that I can, I can start lagging those in there. And then I'll have to do my angle also. So that is what I'm working on now. The concrete has set up pretty good. And so I went ahead and filled the holes the rest way with dirt. And then I used the other end of my spade to, to tamp it down and then really, you know, tamp it in there good. You can then, if this is part of your yard, you can go ahead and seed this with grass or whatever. I did that on both sides. I also measured down, this is where the board is going to go for the kayak, sticking out this way. I measured down one foot. And this is three and a half inches. So this is where the board is. I'll hold the board up there, drill one of them put it in and then level it to do the other one. I will also then use a four foot level from here across to make sure it's level. I don't want to rely on the top down. And then this line here determines everything. This determines level this way and it also determines level across and it determines level going this way. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get these in there first and then I'll have to figure out how to cut my 45s and see where they come out at before I decide where the other level goes. Okay, I have both my lags in there, and by, by doing them in this configuration, it supports it better. And also, um, I leveled this out here, and I'm actually going a quarter of a bubble high on the outer end. That way, if anything settles even a little bit, which it shouldn't with the concrete, but if it settles, you know, just, just a little smidgen as you put the weight on there, it'll settle to level. If you start at level and it settles any pretty soon, they're heading downhill. So you want to be, you know, about a... Oh, I'm just a quarter bubble off level so that the outer end is just a little bit higher. So I will go ahead and probably do the other one. I'm going to level across here from here to there. That will determine where that one goes. And then we'll start doing our 45s. Okay. Everything is on for the first, first one. And as you can see, we are perfectly level. We're also level up and down on this side. We're level that way, so everything is level. These here are a quarter of a bubble high on the outside, so that if there's any settling, it'll settle to level. So I'm going to cut a 45 degree angle on a board, put it here, and then it'll go across like this as a support to, to keep this from, from sagging. So I don't know what length I'm going to get yet, but I'll cut a 45 and then I'll figure that from there. Okay, the top one is done now. It's level and the kayak will sit on here upside down. I also have some eye bolts that I'm going to screw into here. And then there'll be an eye bolt screwed into this side over here. And then I can pull like a rope or a bungee cord over the top to hold it. And the kayaks will sit upside down. So that worked out really well. I did 45 degree angles on these and screwed them in bottom. 
and then down here screwed them in four different times so they can't go anywhere same way on this side and then these here just keep the kayak from falling off the ends so it is perfectly level it should work really really well and I need to do one more down below that and then paint it and then put the kayaks on it but I do need to put the eye bolts in so anyway keep moving forward okay I have the kayak rack done everything worked out very very well get them up off the ground I can store them upside down so we don't have to worry about snow or water or anything. And since the posts are in concrete, it will not give and it will not end up leaning. So really good. Um, the only thing I need to do is I have these eyelets in here. There's one here and one on the other side. And I'll tie a rope to that or a bungee cord. Probably a rope so I can pull it tight and then tie it here. And then same way with this. There's some on that side and then there's these down here. So that I can tie them down so the wind doesn't get under them. Because we do get some tremendous winds here where I live. So. Anyway, I, th I think it turned out really, really well. I am going to paint it at some point. I will paint it the same color as my, uh, my Japanese Tori gate on my pond so that it matches. I probably won't put that on here. Maybe next time I do a backyard update, you'll see it painted. So kind of a long project. It's getting hot out here. I am going to head in, and this is Nick Aquatics, and thanks for watching.